The original Bayonetta was released in early 2010 from director Hideki Kamiya and was met with both critical and sales success. And with that, plans started forming about a sequel. Unfortunately, those plans were halted due to a major restructuring at the game's publisher, Sega, and the sequel looked to be on the shelf. Platinum would then start pitching the sequel to different publishers, before one company stood out. At the Wii U preview Nintendo Direct live from New York City on September 13th, my birthday, they revealed to the world that Bayonetta 2 would be coming to the Wii U exclusively. And naturally, the response was overwhelmingly positive. <sighs> Roll the footage. Bayonetta 2 as a Wii U exclusive makes me want to fucking kill myself as a gamer. Man, forget Nintendo, man. Forget Platinum Games, man. Man. Bayonetta 2 sucks anyway, man. It sucks. Well, then tell me what you're so pissed off about then. I don't want to buy a Wii U. <laughs> How can Bayonetta 2 be a Wii U exclusive? I'm going to kill myself. Gun option, that's good, you know. Pfft, blow your brains out. It's because gay Tinder stole Bayonetta from 360 and PS3! <laughs> I'm the cloud, man. I'm going to the cloud, man. Forget this, man! Forget Nintendo! Man! Play Days of the Light, man! I wanna kick a dolphin and it's vagina hard! I'm so angry at video games right now! Right now. Oh. <laughs> uh, and two years later, Bayonetta 2 is finally out. And probably the smartest thing they decided to do was announce at E3 this year that the original would be included with the sequel. So, hell, we got some time. Let's check it out. Unlike the PS3 version, the Wii U port was treated with actual care. Namely, the game running at 60 frames per second like the 360 version, but featuring much faster load times and not a hint of anti-aliasing. The game also features that nice little Nintendo touch with costumes of Peach, Daisy, Link, and Samus' various suits. Each costume bring its own touch to the game as well. I'm very impressed with the outfit she has, but a part of me feels like they missed out on a big opportunity. But then again, when you think about it, it may have been redundant as she already has one. But it was really smart Nintendo and Platinum to package the original with the sequel, so Nintendo fans could understand the whole story. I mean, <laughs> what company in their right Mind would star series on the Wii U halfway through. <laughs> All right, you released a trilogy on the other systems. You piece of nope, nope. This is happy time because for once, the shoe is on the other foot, ladies and gentlemen. Bayonetta two. 
A few months after the first game, Ceresa and John are in the city when, no surprise, all hell breaks loose. And you want to know how badass this game is going to be? Well, see for yourself. You know, I try to avoid doing this in my Sunday best. She kicks a jet! <laughs> but there were some concerns that Nintendo's involvement would be downplaying Bayonetta's sexuality. And, well, let's see if those concerns were well founded. But as Bayonetta summons a demon, something goes horribly wrong, and John's spirit gets knocked out of her and gets dragged into hell. Determined to save her friend, she heads to the sacred mountain of which holds the entrance to the inferno. But on her journey through Purgatorio, she runs into a familiar face as well as a young boy named Loki, who seems to have rifled through Yame Yugi's jewelry box, and goes along with her, usually in the form of a squirrel. Maybe you've got more to offer than I expected. For the time being though, stay here and don't get frisky. <laughs> Look, I don't think people are really playing this game for the story. What they are playing it for is the mind-boggling action. And how does it fare? It seems Platinum took the original and enhanced it greatly. Bayonetta seems to control even smoother than she did in the previous game, dodging into witch time and delivering a seemingly endless amount of combos still feels just as good, and of course the medals and torture attacks are all still here. What's new is Umbrum Climax, which when enabled delivers a deluge of giant attacks which really help with the bigger enemies. Graphics are 720p and the design of the levels are really detailed. Clearly a lot of love has gone into creating amazing places to kick ever-loving ass in. As for frame rates, I've heard reports it's not locked at 60 frames per second, but I really saw an issue. When it comes to controllers, you can technically use the gamepad. It even has touch controls. But if you want the best response, then look no further than the Pro Controller. We all know what Nintendo controllers are like, and while I'll give nothing but praise for the gamepad, sometimes you just want to have a regular controller in your hands. And this is one of those times. It pays to explore. Sure, you can go from start to finish, but doing so will no doubt miss half the verses in each level. So backtrack and explore corridors for treasure chests, and Muspelman portals, which are gateways to challenges like damage only in witch time, don't get hit, only use enemies weapons, don't touch the floor, and so forth. And there is no penalty for failing, so you can do them again and again. There is just so much to this game. Hell, there's even co-op with tag climax. Not to mention you'll want to go back and get higher trophies and find all the hidden verses. Man, I am loving this game. It's just a real shame that so many people are dismissing this sequel simply because it's a Wii U exclusive. I'm just going to say this. What makes me the most livid about this entire controversy is the same people who have been screaming, crying, and threatening Platinum Games for a multi-platform release 
are the same people who have spent the last 15, 20 years since the Nintendo 64 dismissing Nintendo as a kiddie company who doesn't care about third party support. And then, when Nintendo brings out a mature third party exclusive title to their system, you won't go for it! Ha! <laughs> how! How dare Nintendo! How dare they! Yeah! How fucking dare they actually listen to you! I actually heard someone say Nintendo should release this game on Xbox and PlayStation. I heard someone say that with a straight damn face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And while we're at, let's give Xbox and PlayStation fucking Mario, Zelda, and Smash Brothers while we're at it. Let's just remind everyone, Nintendo is paying for this. They financed the development and publishing of this game. They didn't just hand Platinum a check after the game was finished to put it on their system first, like a certain other company just did with Tomb Raider 2. You know, right now on IGN, there is a list made by the incredibly handsome Andrew Eisen called Everything But We You, which lists over 150 games, not including exclusives, that are coming to Xbox, PlayStation, and PC, but not Wii U. Over 150. And yet, you can't even let us have this. This one game. And I think I know why. Because you don't want to get a Wii U and face the lie you've lived for over 20 years. That Nintendo is actually fun. While you were sitting there pretending to enjoy every single Call of Duty, you could have been playing some genuinely fun and interesting tiles on a unique system. You know, some of you may see this as the ravings of a Nintendo fanboy, and you might be right. But, Nintendo is no less of a company than Sony and Microsoft. And this was business. Plain and simple. And what this has given us is an amazing game. Probably one of the best games of the year. I can't say anything else but just buy Bayonetta 2. I'm Enigma, and we'll see you next time.